Hey there, Hill folk, and welcome back to Appalachian Intelligence. We're extremely thankful to have you all here again with us for another week, for another episode, for another edition of AI. We're here tonight with your hosts, as usual, Justin, Ryan, and Lance. Fellas, how y'all doing tonight? Doing great. How are you doing, Lance? Wonderfully fantastic. That's even better. Not even, not even just fantastic, <laughs> wonderfully. I want to start interjecting adjectives into everything that I say to help add emphasis. Good. Like it's, better, it. it's better than pronouns. Yep. I'm not like sure it. what my, I don't know what pronouns to use, so. <laughs> Mine are Sorry. fucking off. <laughs> Sorry, this, this went off the rails quick. <laughs> really fast, really fast. We can't even get through the intro. And let's restart this. <laughs> no, uh, we're it's, it's just AI guys here for y'all tonight. Um, we did have, uh, well, we were supposed to sit down with a couple really awesome dudes from a really awesome podcast this week. Uh, some junk came up on my end. I had to reschedule with them, so we're in the process of that. Um, but we've always got enough weird to talk about between the three of us, and even if we didn't have the weird to talk about, we would talk about something, and it would get weird. So we, I was going to say, we would make it weird for sure. Yeah, it would get weird really quick. Yeah, yeah. Weird. <laughs> so... <laughs> Before we dive into uh, the meat of the episode, we have, uh, well, first off, <clears throat> we want to remind everybody that uh, you can go on over and check us out on Patreon at patreon.com uh, slash Appalachian underscore intelligence. Uh, we have three different tiers over there to choose from. You can check out all those, see which one you prefer, and uh, if you want to sign up and get some bonus content and to pick our topics and a monthly sit down with us. It's there for the taking. Uh, we will be doing every now and then something called holler back episodes. Um, that's just when bonus content from the conversation that's going out to the public gets released over onto the Patreon for these super long episodes. Uh, we'll, we'll leave the meat of the main conversation in there, but sometimes some of the best conversation that we get into is toward the last, you know, 20, 30, 45 minutes of the conversation. It, we just start wrapping everything up and sometimes going off into other things. So we'll have holler back episodes. We'll try to identify those when they're going on. Um, but yeah, it's pretty cool. Go check it out. We, uh, y'all know that we like to share five star reviews when we get those in. So this week's five star review. Comes from KYBoy606. Says five stars. Great show. Great show. Just found you guys after listening to the confessionals. I drive for a living, so I listen to podcasts all day, every day. Nice to finally see people from here tell about all our strange and wild stories. I live just over the mountains on the Kentucky side of all the weirdness. So y'all keep talking and I'll keep listening. Thanks, Dave. So... Dave, Kentucky Boy 606. We greatly appreciate that. And uh, it's really cool to hear from the local Central Appalachian folks that are listening to this and taking it in. And here's the thing, fellas. If we're getting approval from our people, we're doing something all right. Yeah. God's well, people I in God's country doing God's work. Y'all keep listening. We love it. <laughs> That's exactly right. Exactly right. All right. So this episode coming into it, you know, before we started recording, Lance was talking about how he's been diving back into the book of Enoch. Ryan was talking about how he's been stuck on this whole time thing. And uh, for those of y'all that are kinfolk, Patreon members, you can go check out our last Hollerback episode, and Ryan is going crazy with some time theories that was blowing and melting everybody's mind sitting here. Us and the Silver Peel boys, we didn't even know what to say. Like, I didn't know. Like, I, I'm I'm not rendered speechless very often. 
I can usually come up with something to say about pretty much anything. Listen, the old web the boy was spinning late there last Tuesday night or whenever it was, I've still not fully grasped some of the existential thoughts that he was just coming up with out of, since it seemed to be nowhere. It keeps coming too, Lance. It keeps coming. I don't think he's fully grasped everything I, that he was trying to put out there. I don't know why it's coming to my head. I don't know what the whole kick is about. It just started popping in there. So, and when I was on the planer the other day looking at Justin, like, oh my gosh, it happened again. <laughs> Something, yeah, all these things keep coming, man. So, I don't know. I'm just going to let them keep coming. Just let them keep coming. Yeah. Ryan's, in, Ryan's, in, in, come in, come in, in, come in. <laughs> Ryan has been getting these downloads, I think, because he's been asking the ether so much for something to show up and, and show itself and tell him all this stuff and, and make itself known. I think it's just starting to happen. I think he's getting downloads. I think he's getting visited. I think there's a bunch of stuff going on with Ryan. Yeah, I agree. I wish it'd be complete downloads and not this cryptic messaging. Like, don't give me something I don't understand. It's the it's the it's the process of the I don't know biweekly or bi monthly I guess maybe probes that you're getting at night. So it's just taking some time to get from the rear end to the top end. It's just it's got to pass a lot of a lot of hoops and things. It's got to get through after being probed. Um, so that's why you're getting fragmented pieces. Don't you loosen up a little bit. I think sphincter kind of doesn't quite, quite get quite as tight. You'll, you'll be getting more of the download than just partial. Uh, I'll stop clenching. I concur. I think that's probably exactly what's going on. I'm with it. All right, fellas. Well, today, tonight, I don't know why I ever say today. We don't ever record during the day. It's always <laughs> night. Have we ever been on during? No, it's never happened, right? Only no, when no. we went on a show in Tennessee. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. On the weekend. So tonight, we're going to talk about something that I've been looking into a little bit and that I've been really interested in and just the whole idea and the concept of. And we're going to be looking at disappearing places. Okay. And by that, I mean, there's a lot of people out there that have accounts and stories of Going somewhere and not just like, not just going, but sometimes interacting with other people, um, you know, like being there and physically doing a lot of different things. And then they try to come back to it or, you know, a little while later, whatever. And it's, it's not there. It's just gone. So I've been diving into some of these stories, and some of them are, are a lot weirder and crazier than others. And some of them don't even seem like, you know, that much. But they're all interesting. They're all intriguing. Just the idea of a place, not a person, not a uh, what, but, but a place being there one minute. And the next minute being completely gone, vanished, erased from history, never been there. So before we jump into some of these stories that I've came across and some of these, I'm going to be reading these short little accounts and stories. And some of them I'm going to be talking about just from memory. Um, but before we jump into it, I want to ask you boys. Do y'all know of any stories or accounts or have any experiences with a place disappearing, vanishing? Like, are you talking like you mentioned before on the podcast, like this state of Franklin, like, like historically was vanished or like me no. walking into a Walmart and then a Walmart not being there anymore? Yeah, that. That. Like physically something just not like uh not like 
It's not like history covering. Not like up, State like, of Franklin. Not even like Atlantis. You know, people believe that it was right. there, and then due to uh, natural disaster, or whatever, it sunk beneath the sea, and and it's lost to history. Not even like that. This is like me walking into a gas station to buy Coke Zero, and then it just not being there anymore. Yes, and yeah, actually, there's no gas station. You're going to hear a story that's extremely similar to that. Hmm. I have no experiences like that. Um, I'm still trying to wrap my mind around this. So, like, are we talking like, kind of like a mirage to where you thought you saw something, but it wasn't there? Or like, no, because in some of these, in some of these cases, maybe, maybe, okay, but in a lot of them, people are interacting with other people. They are buying something or or encountering, interacting with their environment, whether that's people or animals or, uh, you know, the trees, the grass, the, the like they're physically encountering things within their environment and then come back and it's not there. Are there any other similarities as in location, time of day or anything like that? Not that I've found or come across or, I mean, possibly, I'm sure that, I mean, you know, as well as I do, if you sit down and put enough stories together, you can connect dots in, in almost any case. Yeah. But the majority of these just seem. So it seems like they're jumping timelines by stepping through the door. Well, that's one of the theories. I mean, that's one of the theories. And, and there's not a whole lot of theories out there. There's just theories that I've you know, kind of thought about and came up with, you know, if you look at them on Reddit, you'll find some of these stories in a, in a subreddit of like glitches in the matrix. You know, you'll, you'll find some there. Um, you find <laughs> some programmer. Oh shit. That guy says you was supposed to be there. <laughs> I hit the yeah. one. I should hit the zero. <laughs> but no, there's some, there's some weird accounts out there <clears throat> and you have some that are extremely well known. That may not be exactly like, you know, so I was there and then I wasn't there, but it kind of has ties to the same basic concept. So here's the, here's the weird thing. While I've been looking into this, I start getting like this memory. Okay. And I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's a dream. I don't know if I read so many stories that it's just kind of like testing vanishing places. Well, I, I, I don't know, but I started getting like these little fragments of a memory. Okay. Of, <laughs> of being up above of my dad's house. All right. And, and as we're talking like up above my dad's house, Lance has been there. Me and Lance. Holler, holler boy. <laughs> Me and Lance went ghost hunting up there one night. It was a it was a blast. <laughs> Here's to you, squirrel. Here's to you, squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> so it's straight mountainside. Okay, it, it's it's a holler like a holler holler, but up above up above his house is straight up mountainside. There is no flat places. There are no clearings. There are no anything like that. It's just it's. It's poplar and oak all the way up the mountain. But I have this memory, but just little fragments of it, of being a, a kid and going to this hollered out oak and kicking back in that hollow part of the oak. And I remember it like just barely walking up into the woods above the house sitting in this thing and looking out over this field. There are no fields there. There is no, there is no, and, and I don't know where this keeps coming from. Like, I don't know where these, I don't even know if it's real. I just know that I keep getting these, like, this is a memory. Well, maybe you should stop tightening your sphincter and letting the probes come he in easier. probed. Yeah, Ooh. I guess. I don't know. I don't know. There are no fields up there, Justin. No, none. Zero. There's not even a way for there to be a field up there. No. There's plenty and of even if, out. There's plenty of hollowed out oak trees, I'm sure. But 
Yeah, but I specifically remember like the like these fragments that I'm getting. I remember like hands behind your head, feet kicked up like Frodo Baggins, and then you're looking out over the meadow and there butterflies are around. Smoking yeah. a pipe like Frodo. Yeah. But I remember being so well, being young enough that I just walked up into the woods, just barely up into the woods and doing it. Like this was my little spot. Mm. I don't know. I don't know where it's going. Mayhap she sat in a fairy circle and you seen what they wanted you to. Maybe. That's another theory. <laughs> what if like these are like fairy circles? Like this is a repressed memory of a happy place she used to go to. That's yeah. possible. That's possible. There's a lot of childhood trauma that that I've got <laughs> pushed down here. A whole lot of childhood trauma <laughs> that will never be spoken about. <laughs> well, come on. Tell us about your feelings, Justin. Yes. This maybe, is where you can empty your sorrowed soul. And maybe, maybe for the be made fun of for it. <laughs> maybe for the Ken folk over on Patreon, we might have to uh, we might have to have a therapy <laughs> session of. All right, okay, so let's get into this. We got a basis to what this is. Now I'm intrigued. When you first came this, places. When you first came to this, you, you first sent us this. I was like, that sounds stupid. But <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be ridiculous. I mean, for whatever. Now I'm now I'm intrigued. Well, good. At so first, I was first, a little bit, you know, curious, but now you've intrigued me. So the first story that I'm going to read is extremely close to the example that you gave trying to figure this out. Okay, this comes from redditor u underscore Selly. I was driving from Dallas to Tuscaloosa, left at midnight, and drove straight through the night with two friends. <clears throat> Passed out sleeping. It was probably 4 a.m., and I had a quarter of a tank of gas, which translates to about 100 miles. I saw that the nearest town was about 90 miles, so I was pretty worried about making it. Before I hit that town, I ran into a tiny town that wasn't on the map. A few houses, a gas station, a convenience store, and that was about it. I walked into the gas station and handed the guy 50 bucks so I could fill up. He was a really tall, skinny black guy, like skin wrapped around the bones level skinny, probably six foot five inches at least. And he just had this eerie look about it. He looked at me, leaned over the counter, scanned the outside and looked back at me. He handed me my $50 back and a hat and said, look, you look like a nice young fella. You don't want to be out here at this time of night looking like that. Put the hat on, get to your car quickly, and get gas the next town. I was super confused and just said, I don't have enough gas to get there. That's why I'm here. I didn't even know this place existed. He responded, it doesn't. <clears throat> here, there's two gallons left in this can. Just drive another 15 to 20 miles out and use those two gallons. But please, you need to move now. At that point, I stopped questioning him and left. On my return trip, it was daytime. So I wanted to stop back in and return the can with two gallons in it. But wouldn't you know it, I couldn't find the little town again. It's like it disappeared over the weekend. To this day, I refuse to stop in small towns that aren't on the map. I have no idea what that gas station employee was trying to save me from, but he pushed me out of there with some urgency and even gave me free gas to do so. So, first little quick story. Now, that one could be explained that it just... Didn't make the right stop, right? I mean, on his way back through. It was oh, yeah. different. Yeah. He could see in the daylight, whereas he couldn't at night. A different road. Different road. Anything like that. Second of all, you said you got real close to being racist. Listen, I, I almost asked, what kind of racist <laughs> subreddit did you get on? He's <laughs> a really, really weird looking black dude. <laughs> I didn't get close. I didn't get close to being racist. That was. No, no, no. Uh, I said you silly. silly. That's what oh, you said. Oh, yeah, that's uh, what kind of, I was curious. Kind of. Hey, wait a minute. What is this? I'm hating my. I holler. mean, no, <laughs> that's exactly right. I ain't no hating his holler. <laughs> but no, you're right. That one could be explained away. Could be, yeah. uh, or you know, the same. It's weird, but it's also weird too. Like, he had the gas can. Like, so he, he, he still had it in his possession. Yeah. Right, it's strange, but I think more so he probably just took a different road. Like he was, when you're worried about getting gas, you know, you're a little more quick to try to get, especially if you're out 
but maybe somewhere you don't really know. It's late, you know, not a lot of places are open. And then in the yeah. morning, hit it back the other way. Yeah. You're not quite as quick to look. You could very easily just, if it's that small of a town, you could have very easily driven past it. I think the weirdest part of that one is why I try to rush this dude out of there as fast as possible. Like, yeah, that what is, was going on? That That's is strange. weird. I agree. And why, when you make the comment, I didn't even know this place existed. Why does the dude, why does the clerk say it doesn't? You need well, to I say stuff like that a lot, though. Like people say, I don't know how it exists. It doesn't. It's not real. I mean, I mean that's that's kind of a thing that, yeah. yeah. I think, you know, if you're from the area, that's kind of, I mean, that's when he made that statement. Like how oh, it's just the way he just talks about the small opponent town that he's in. Yeah. Could totally be. Could totally be. Okay. Interesting. Give us more. Yeah. That is, <clears throat> that, and he does, with the gas can, that's physical evidence of the place. Well, yeah. He was definitely somewhere. Makes me believe and again, that the exit. And again, this kind of all goes back to, well, first off, are the people telling the truth? Secondly, it's a lot about perception, right? Like a lot of this is about perception. But like we've talked on here a whole lot, like your reality is your reality. Like whatever you perceive, that's reality. Yeah. So it's a weird, that's a fine line to walk to. Okay, on to the next one. This one just says, from a former Redditor. I grew up in the middle of nowhere. Some of my relatives lived a few minutes walk from my house up a hill, and they had woods behind their houses. I used to explore the woods all the time. I knew the paths and places well. You couldn't go too far because there was a cliff and an incredibly deep lake beyond the cliff. Anyway, one day while walking, I saw an old log cabin. It was sitting in the middle of a field I had been to many times before. It was a bright and sunny day. The field was lit lit up in gold. The cabin was very dark and strange. I felt like I shouldn't go near it because I knew it shouldn't have been there. I was very confused to suddenly see this cabin that had never existed before. I left the woods, but went back numerous times looking for the cabin again. Never saw it again in my life. And I do know the location it was in. I wasn't lost. And again, there are only a few places you can go back in those woods since there is a cliff and a lake. It's not like miles and miles of woods before you reach the cliff. So that one's a little harder to explain away. It sound more like, you know, a, a creepy cabin in the woods disappears. Like that feels like something that, you know, you've seen on every, every seven years they've made a movie about or something, right? So like, there's, that one feels a little more like, you know, that's yeah, weird. Like it's, you know, it's a strange thing that, Hard to explain away. I, I think an interesting thing to do would be go to that field and look for remnants of an old settlement where a cabin might have been or an old house and see if somehow you did jump a timeline and see it that day. But now you can't ever see it again because you can't make it back. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a valid point. Like people claim to see apparitions of people you know, dressed in, you know, medieval garb or, you know, whatever, like uh, Civil War soldiers. <laughs> I told him we have one, too. <laughs> the Holy Grail. <laughs> Monty Python. <laughs> so, I, mean, I hope if I you would meet see, those guys. If you could see, like, you know, apparitions of people, would it be like too crazy far off to see an apparition of a of a structure of a house of i mean everything's energy right yeah i mean if they're walking through the woods i'm saying what if they you know let's go with your theory portals maybe they'd never step between these two trees that they stepped between before yeah maybe or whatever, a hollowed out tree, a hollowed out oak that doesn't exist. They could have done that. It's possible. They're just you thinking like different dimensions, like walking into the woods and there's a portal to a different dimension. Is that why you I'm not that? thinking different would dimensions. Your, just, would that be your explanation for this? Now, I know obviously we don't know. We're postulating theories here. Yeah. You think that's is that would that be you my if you had to explain this, like all right. This is what happened. What do you think? What, what's your go-to? My go-to on this one is kind of along, uh, along the lines of what Ryan said. 
somehow you slipped timelines. Like maybe even just for an instant. You slipped timelines to a, a, a time where this, I'm not even saying that it was an apparition, but it was a, it was somehow, some way, you slipped into a timeline where this cabin stood there. And upon leaving, you came back out of it. Thank God, or you might have been stuck in <laughs> whatever time period this was. Yeah. Like that would be my best guess on that. Now, who knows? Possible. I mean, if, if we're, dumb. if we're <laughs> going to access to a dumb and they found it and they had hit the button and it d- disappeared. <laughs> Maybe that could work too. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, if we're going to entertain the idea, and we do a lot. If we're going to entertain the idea of, you know, multiple dimensions and parallel universes, you know, maybe, maybe it was that. Maybe it's a, it was a shift into a parallel universe where this cabin stood in the middle of this clearing to where it's not usually, you know, all the other times that you're there. I don't know, man. Like, all this stuff, all these accounts are weird. I don't know. The, the one that I'm saving for last is by far the weirdest. And I'm not reading the story straight out. I'm just going to give it by memory based on hearing it from somewhere else. But these just coming from, you know, normal, everyday, average people on Reddit, I thought it would be cool just to open it up with and see what people are saying, you know, some of these sure, accounts, yeah. I mean, but I don't know. I think that there's multiple theories for each of these and I can't, I can't say for sure what any of them are. I wish that one of us sitting here had some kind of example or some kind of experience that we could give to this. Cause that would be uh, freaking sweet. I'm kind of glad we don't. No, I wish we did. <laughs> I feel well, like I've had places like, that I've been to and then visited again seven, five, seven years later. I mean, like, I thought there was a such and such year. But that's not like it that vanished. It's just like I just remember something wrong. That's, that's any new restaurant that's ever been put in Hayside. Wasn't this <laughs> yeah. place a Mexican restaurant? Wait, didn't this place sell moonshine? Wait, is this place a gymnasium now? What is going on? Yeah. I think that's more uh, CERN's fault and Mandela effects. <laughs> we lanes. jumped 18 timelines. I'm yeah. sure that CERN is really concerned with the ongoings of the greater town of Asa. I'm not talking about Asa. I'm talking about places <laughs> that you've been that you think. It's been their plan the whole time. It's actually the hell. There will be they two restaurants. First. That's the place they change first. Let the, finger, hey. let the fingertips and the roots move out from Asa. <laughs> there Maybe. will be a Pizza Plus. And a subway, and that is it, damn it. <laughs> Fire it up. Maybe our <laughs> rock is just like the top of the pyramid to this dumb where this large hadron collider is operating out of. It could be. Maybe that's what's represented by all those circles and everything in the middle of that on the rock. Maybe that's a maybe that's a particle accelerator. I mean, if you're gonna hide one by George. <laughs> That'd be the place to hide one. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't even hide it by George. I just hide it where it's at. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know any Georges in that area. <laughs> All right, next one. <clears throat> this is from Redditor U Miss Alpha ninety seven. When I was a kid, I went exploring in these pine woods behind my house. We live on a farm, so there's paddocks in front of our house and pine woods behind us. I wandered off for a bit before realizing I was lost. I started to get worried as I couldn't get my bearings. I explored those woods all the time and knew them well, and I hadn't been walking long, so I knew I wasn't too far in. Yet I was surrounded by trees that weren't even pine, which was impossible because it's a pine forest. Never once had I ever seen a tree that wasn't a pine in that forest or the surrounding forest. It started to get dark, and I started crying and just ran fumbling through the way I had come, hoping to find my way back. I then stumbled upon this clearing, flat ground, near perfect circle. It felt really weird. 
There were these bushes at the edge of the clearing, so I climbed through them. Once I got out, I realized I was standing behind the chicken coop right near my house. Ran home and got yelled at by my mom for being out so late. Next day, went to check behind the chicken coop. No bushes, no clearing, just pine trees. That place just disappeared. Even through my teen years, I still wandered off hoping to find that place to prove I wasn't insane. I never did. Okay. So that for sure sounds like a fairy circle, right? Yeah, that's what I think. But and, and according to most, fairies are not a good thing. Uh yeah, according to most. It depends on it, it depends on your relations with the fairies, I, I guess. Mean, our buddy Maverick seems to be cool with them. Yeah, yeah, he's they're they're just banging around his treehouse. So, <laughs> I mean, that's totally cool. I said that was the last one I was going to read, but I think I'm going to read one more. So, was your forest nymph is in the woods singing you a seductive song? You're saying no. no. I'm saying no because I am a them, devout. But- Faithful, happy man. Absolutely, I, I agree. I just, I my, just asked the question. I, I wasn't st- saying that I was going to. I was just—I mean, I was just asking the question. That's what you said, Lance. What That's was what the said. question again? <laughs> was it, what are they called? Is it what's the what's the is it a forest nymph? What's yeah, the I'm fairy? Sure. That, just, just fairies. Any fairy? There's like there's a specific. I mean, they have a they have a, a specific name that. Yeah, kind there's like, all kinds of different kind of fairies. like a siren, right? They sing the song or whatever, or they are in the woods or whatever and kind of get you, trick you into coming into their area. I thought sirens were associated with the with the sea or the ocean. Okay, okay. I ain't that they are, but I'm saying I was making like they're kind of like a siren when they have a song or a dance or something that they do. He's like, talking about Ryan. He's saying he's saying if some super hot nymph fairy chick was standing in the middle of the woods with her red curly hair just flowing down past her shoulders and 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 you know, breasts is popping out of the top of her uh corset. Well, dress. first of all, I wouldn't fall for it because I would Shit like that just doesn't happen to me. So this is I'm a fairy. A number so it doesn't one ever happen to anybody trick. that we know of. But I'm saying if this happened, <laughs> I guess I'd yell, "Cut the bullshit!" I want to see what you really are, and then just follow up from there. <laughs> well, just again, just a, I was asking the question. Well, if it's or just see what like the ones, for. if it's just like the ones, realize we're going to go into a ten minute discussion of what a fairy was. Since you said fairy circle, I thought you knew what fairy. I thought we were all in agreement what a fairy was. I thought we were too until you started talking about freaking sirens and everything else. Just, just, you look, as an example of how they get people to come into their atmosphere. Oh, he said it was gosh. like a siren, like a siren. Okay. Well, all right. If they're the ones like Maverick takes pictures of, I'm going in. If it's like a siren, obviously you may not have a choice because they're going to call you in. And- but look, if you're talking like classification of the Fae, you're talking a bunch of different things. You're talking, you're talking pixies. You're talking trolls. You're talking goblins. You're talking yeah, nymphs. A huge list of things that. Yeah, fairies. Are, I mean, it's a huge. There's such a huge discrepancy on what you say, fairy or Fae, like. It's the list goes on and on and on of what it could possibly be. When I think fairies, I was just thinking about the little things that you know. I think fairies. You know what I think? Every time we say fairies, you know what automatically pops into my mind? Tinkerbell. Exactly. Yeah. Because that's what Hollywood does, man. That's what they do. They pound it in our head. Yeah, that's what we get indoctrinated by Hollywood, by Disney, with all (laughs) this stuff. Damn you, evil ass Walt Disney. I mean, like, I know Peter that Tinkerbell is not the representation of the Fae, but like that's what yeah. automatically pops into my head every time I hear fairy. Yeah, I, I don't know. They say don't enter those things. Like, but she got out. I mean, she went in and got out. Yeah, maybe it helps if you don't know any better. If it was a fairy circle, 
Yeah. I mean, this would have to be a pretty big fairy circle because she talks about walking through trees. Yeah, and this this, this could be something completely different. I was just throwing fairy circle out there, you know, because it said it was a perfect circle and this could be anything. Yeah, and a perfect circle is a band anyway. I don't know why they'd be in the middle of the woods. It yeah. doesn't make any sense. I don't know either, unless they're just trying to throw a free show. I don't know. I think I think this is another I think this is another crazy one of like slipping into a different slipping into a different realm or into a different dimension or or whatever because you're in the middle of a pine forest then all of a sudden you're not you know she's talking about being back in these woods all the time and spending so much time back in these woods and never seeing another tree that wasn't a pine and then but all I'm of sure a there's some sort of lore around pine trees too right i mean if we got to digging around i would imagine there is some portal lore or dimension slipping lore around pine trees because it just feels like it just feels like there is like right there's always usually when there's one of these stories we don't see them saying and there's a huge line of oak trees that you know i slipped into a deer it's always pine tree right well that's because pines are so creepy dude when the wind starts blowing through them it sounds like they people are die. whispering they they're never also die. they're also evergreen yeah they don't right. die in the winter they only shed needles and make perfect little padded beds to sit on. Yeah, they probably have. Well, I know that they have a whole lot of tradition as far as like uh, Nordic pagan thoughts and beliefs as far as that, because, you know, they were the first ones that started using it as like the Yule tree. That's where we get our Christmas tree from. Yeah. It was the Yule tree is what they celebrated during the the winter solstice, the Yule time festivals. Those are the only time they burnt Yule logs. Because mm -hmm. as yeah. you know, you don't really want to burn pine in your furnaces. No, super wet. You gob up your chimney too. All right, so super savvy. Aberfoyle in Scotland. Uh, there is a Scots pine known as the fairy tree. Mm. And the fairy tree legend has it that the Reverend one Robert Kirk was abducted by fairies in 1692 and that his spirit is said to remain in this ancient fairy pine tree. It is a persistent theme in folklore of the Scots pine and is used uh, is there used as a marker in the landscape. Uh, the highlands mark burial places of warriors, heroes, or chiefs. Further south, the Scots pines were more unusual and it stood out and were used lots of times as ancient trackways and cross crossroads. Um, it goes on and on about the pine tree, sometimes planted as a badge, as a gesture of defiance um, to the king or to whoever was in power at the time. So you're talking about a Scots pine. So I'm guessing we're talking <laughs> Scotland and and our, that the UK region, right? Correct. Okay. So this story that I was reading from this redditor, she said, "Mum." Yeah, I noticed so, that too. True. That's UK. I like how in that time planting a pine tree was like a fuck you to the queen or something. You queen. <laughs> Here's is a pine that, tree. Is that a pine tree in his yard? <laughs> Off with his head. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Also, seems like as soon as they said it was a reverend, I gotta go straight to the fact that they're probably trying to discredit some sort of pagan belief over fairies and stuff. See, you took the reverend. We can't have this devilry. Because a lot of that went on then, too. I don't know. Sounds like the reverend lost in this battle. <laughs> if so he I ever exists, is what I'm saying. quick Google search. of Here's what I typed in. 
pine tree, fay, and lore. And I got instant hits of fairy trees in the forests, uh, fairy tales from trees and stories of the pine tree, Japanese folklore dealed with sacred pine trees and the Takasago pines, greeting of the old friends from the sacred trees of the Finnish folklore, hmm. fairy lore magic and enchantments in the pine forest. They can be found in mushroom circles. Yes. Forests. Sweet. I don't know. Hey, I'm in. I'm in. Yeah. Look, we're talking UK. We're talking like. It said that one said buried treasure is amongst a long line of pine trees. Nice. And I have to go through the fairy circle first. I'm down. Mm. I'm down. I guess as long as you ask permission and you're I don't know how you know if it's okay after you ask. I ain't even asking permission. <laughs> I'm gonna punch a bunch of these little tinker bells right in the face on the way this trash is forgiveness than it is permission. Yeah. I don't think that works in these situations. <laughs> well, you know, you talked about like this forced nymph coming out and kind of like seducing you into the woods and stuff and like if you look at fae folklore, if you look at fairy folklore, like there's a lot of different things that people believe and describe, you know, especially in the, the whole UK area. As fae, like they classify everything. You Isn't know, big the main fae. kind of the main folklore over the over there is the fae. Like it's pretty, yeah, they essentially blame every, not blames not a good word, but they essentially credit everything that way to the fake correct well especially back in the older times like they've more modernized you know now to most western beliefs as far as to the supernatural and paranormal but the farther back you look the more that it's fairies bigfoots fairy cryptids are fairy the UFOs, changelings ufos are fairies the leprechauns and all the different things yeah mm-hmm. poltergeists are fairies everything is fairies like you know, what we would look at as abductions and UFO cases today, they would just call fairy changelings then. So, like, I mean, it's a whole, like, they classified everything as the fae, as fairies. We're actually, we're going to get Josh Cutchin on here in a few weeks, too, to give us a whole rundown of fairy folklore, the fae, how it corresponds with Bigfoot, with UFOs, with all this different stuff. Because he's if you just said that earlier, that would have saved us a lot of conversation <laughs> about what fairies are. Well, I mean, it's, it's a good conversation. I like yeah, it. Am I wrong, Lance? <laughs> <laughs> Look, y'all know if we're talking about it, eventually at some point, we're going to have somebody on here who knows. Yeah. Well, everybody that we have on here knows a lot more than we know. Well, that, we've t- we've told everybody. But anywhere the start. knows a lot more yeah. than we know. We've told everybody from the start. We don't know shit about any of this. We just that's why we bring these people on. It's your fault for listening. <laughs> these three idiots talk about this stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, y'all we, get. So we bring people who know what's going on, right? And, or even they don't know. They seem like they know compared to us. <laughs> yeah, really. All right, last story that I'm going to read before I go to the. Big one. Okay. This is from Redditor. You skeleton skellers. That's a really cool name. Skeleton <laughs> skellers. <It's> not racist. <laughs> Look, I can't help it. All right. I can't, I can't, I can't PC down what these Redditors are saying, Lance. Okay. I'm just reading straight from the story. All right. I'm going to go, this is for you into this. I like how you were reading that story, and you weren't paying any attention because you were reading, but Ryan and I had the exact same thought at the exact same time. We just went like this together. <laughs> <laughs> All right, proceed. Sorry. All right. When I went on a road trip to see my family in Texas, sounds like a lot of these are happening in Texas. Yeah, Texas must be a different dimension. Maybe that's why they get by with so much stuff down there. Yeah. It's that border down there. They just they jump dimensions until they get across. Maybe it would be along the 33rd. True, true, that it'd be the 33rd parallel. Mm. Mm. All right, let me start over. 
When I went on a road trip to see my family in Texas, I stopped at a gas station to fill up and get some coffee as it was about 2 a.m. I went inside and there was a man at the counter smiling as normal. They didn't sell coffee, surprisingly, so I settled with an energy drink. I exited the store, got into my car, and drove off as you normally would. As soon as I left the parking lot of the dimly lit gas station, my gas tank was back on low, my energy drink was gone as if it vanished out of the cup holder, and when I looked into my rearview mirror, there was no gas station. I turned around, and all there was was Texas land. I still have no clue what happened to this day. This is not real. There's not a gas station in America that didn't sell coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and what kind of gas stations out of coffee? It's not real. This is not a real story. <laughs> and this is one of those moments, too, that we've all been in there. He got his stuff and he drove. And he's zoned out. He's throwing his Red Bull out the window and littered after he got done with it. Totally forgot where he was at. Just he's on on route, whatever, driving with nothing for an hour, two hours, three hours, and he's just been in his own head, and that's, that's why he turned. He's hot. What just happened? We all done it, right? We all drove home from work. I'm like, how did I get here? Yeah, mostly because I'm listening to Audible. <laughs> I'm like, oh man, touche. No free ads, but like, I don't. Uh, it's I don't know. That's cra- it's crazy. Welcome it's crazy. It's weird. Uh, it's a weird story. That is weird. Well, yeah, I think big one. I think that is one of those. Real quickly, I think that is one of those. Like well, this is done with this story. <laughs> said no coffee in the gas station <laughs> in America. There's no way this is real. Next, <laughs> I think that is one of them that, like. Like you were just saying, we all get in that in that weird zone. You know, he might have been, he might have actually done all this stuff. And like you said, the energy drink drop under his chair or he'll chug it and throw it out. I mean, he's been driving a long time. It was 2 a.m. And he might have been a few miles down the road when he was like looking in his rearview mirror to check on this gas station and it's gone. Now, if it, this story is plays out exactly like it's written, it's freaking weird. Like, Absolutely. there's no explaining it. Yeah. But, I think there are some explanations that you can put it because I know we sailed out of, we went on a cruise a few years ago as a family and we sailed out of New Orleans. Okay. We were leaving at seven o'clock Sunday morning. Well, I was coaching Little League football at the time and I tried to get the game moved to way earlier that morning on Saturday morning. Couldn't get it moved. So the game didn't get over until like 4 o'clock or 4.30 p.m. Saturday. So we jumped in the vehicle right after the game, and we're driving to New Orleans throughout the night. That doesn't now, sound any fun at all. It was terrible. But, I mean, we had to board this ship at 7 a.m. the very next morning. So you're talking, uh, you're talking what, 16 hours for a, uh, a uh, 12, uh, 12 or 13 hour trip. So there's not a whole lot of leeway here. We're not stopping anywhere to get any rest. Stop and get gas. Stop and eat like quickly. Get back on the road and go. So I was driving because, well, for one, I do all the driving. But the reason I do all the driving is because Monica scares me to death and uh, I can't take it. Uh, no sign. <laughs> Monica scares you too. No, but my wife don't let her drive anywhere. <laughs> so we're driving through the night. Well, about the time that we got somewhere in the middle of Mississippi. Dude, middle of the night, there was junk like materializing in the middle of the road. I was swerving, slamming on my brakes. Like I was hallucinating, man. And now we're only talking like, I don't know, 10, 11 hours in probably. And literally I was seeing stuff materialize like up out of the road, the middle of the highway and swerving. And finally I was like, look, Monica, you're going to have to drive. I'm going to kill us all. If I, if I keep driving, if I drive any longer. <laughs> okay. So when I was an airman, I was on my way back from Mississippi to Virginia. 
And I'd worked all day Friday. And then I left to get up here quick. No, it was Thursday. I'm sorry. We had a down Friday. Every other Friday was off. So I take off Thursday after work. And it's like it's like two, three o'clock in the morning. It's a 13-hour trip. And uh fell asleep on the road. Had a dream that a car bowed up in front of me and I dead stopped on the interstate. Luckily, I was alone on this road. <laughs> I just had this vision of taillights all around me and I just freaking bowed up in my truck in the middle of the road. And that, that's just a story to remind people don't do stupid shit like that. Don't drive. Don't drive that far. Yeah, really. Like it's it's a bad deal. It's yeah. a bad deal. Wouldn't advise. But anyway, I, I say all that and I tell that story to say that, you know, these road trips, a lot of times, some stuff can be happening that looking back on it, it might yeah. be like, well, that was weird. Or I seen that. Like I could easily sit here right now and say, dude, I saw all these apparitions in the middle of the road. Or, you know, I, I saw, like, like, but, but no, I know that I was like hallucinating. I just yeah. been driving for so long. <laughs> So, I mean, it's it, it could the, be explained the, away. The tired mind can do some crazy things. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. All right. Like, right now, if people were watching us, they would accuse me of taking gummies again. But I swear to you, I'm still sober. I'm just, for some reason, so freaking tired tonight. Just just really tired. Major I don't know why. Because, you know, Oh man! Yeah, I think it was the lining out of the songs. All right, Justin. All right. So this what next one is what we've been waiting for. This next one comes from a podcast that I really enjoy listening to, "Scared to Death." Um, our boy Dan Cummins and his wife Lindsay do a uh, a like a paranormal story, you know, ghost story podcast. They drop once a week where Dan and his research team find like two stories to to share, uh, you know, about haunted locations or paranormal encounters or whatever. And then his wife, Lindsay, she reads off uh, and, and shares listeners stories. So this story, and I remember when I heard it, I went straight to Ryan and I was like, dude, this is nuts. Like, I have no idea if, if this lady checks out. And apparently it does because she sent emails of, I mean, she had receipts. And by receipts, I mean actual receipts. So the girl or, or this lady that's telling it, she was a girl at the time this took place. She was nine years old. This happened in Lincoln City, Oregon. So her mom used to take, she was a single mother. She would take her and her kids, um, you know, a few Saturdays out of the year to the beach. They'd, they'd have like a beach weekend or a beach day. So they left from their home and they're going out to have one of these beach days. We, they get out there, they have, and um, the, some of the details may be a little off with this. I listened to it a, a few months ago and I haven't re listened to it. So I'm just stating it as I remember it. But as far as the actual weird basis, I've got that down. So they go out and they have this beach day. They're going to drive back home. It was a few hour drive or a couple hour drive, whatever. They're going to drive back home. But this intense, crazy weather hits, like crazy, crazy thunderstorm. And apparently it's just getting worse and worse and worse. So they stop in this little place in Lincoln City, Oregon, and or, or they're driving through Lincoln City, Oregon, looking for motels, uh, anywhere to stay that night to not have to drive in, in that kind of weather. And they're talking about, you know, she's talking about the the Oregon passes and all that stuff and, and how it was treacherous driving anyway on all these mountain roads. So it was it was just terrible. So they're looking all over this town and apparently, you know, a lot of the people had the same idea that they did. And, you know, a lot of the motels, you know, there was no vacancy in all of these motels. 
So they keep driving around. They keep driving around. The ones that they do find open uh, won't allow pets, and they have their dog with them. So they keep on driving, keep on driving. They come across this little motel. It was a, a single-story motel with, you know, just kind of like a, you know, how these old single-story wrap around looking motels are you know doors side by side by side all the rooms right there on the first floor and they allowed pets <clears throat> and the lady telling the story says she remembers it vividly because it had an, an outdoor pool and all that she could think of was you know she's nine years old all she could think was man when this weather clears up a little bit i'm hitting that pool wide open so they go in, they talk to the lady at the front desk. This lady is super sweet. You know, she's telling them that that she's got a room. She's making over the kids. She's making over the pet. Like, she's just super nice lady. And the mom actually tells her, you know, I'm so thankful that you guys were open. I, I, I thought we were going to have to sleep in our vehicle. And the lady says, well, we're always looking to, to help whoever we can help, whoever's in need. And she was like, you know, she thought that was a little strange because like, you know, she's just a somebody working the front desk at a motel. Like that's literally your job. You just people to stop by. So anyway, they stay the night there. This lady that's telling the story, um, you know, she said like she remembers every part of this trip because they didn't do this very often. It's like, you know, staying in a motel and away from home and. Like they had such a good time and like she's talking about playing and all this different stuff. Well, the weather does clear up the next morning and she goes and jumps in the pool and they're swimming in the pool and they make like a whole morning and, and afternoon out of it. Well, before they're leaving and checking out, like checkouts 11, noon, whatever. So I guess not afternoon, just morning. But before they check out, um, the dog has an accident in the in the room. So they're cleaning it up and they're worried like, holy crap, you know, we paid a, a deposit for, you know, all this different stuff. Well, they go tell the lady that the dog had the accident and that they cleaned it up the, the best that they could. And the lady still, same lady, same front desk lady. And she's just super sweet again. And, you know, it's okay. You know, we love our pets just as much as we love our people and, you know, going on and on and on. So they check out. You know, the lady pays for the room, gets the receipts from paying for the room. They leave, go back home. No big deal. A few Saturdays come up, you know, come down the road, and they decide they're going for another beach day. But this time, since they had so much fun at this little motel, they're going to go back and stay in it for a night. So they're going to have a beach day. And they're going to stay in this place for the night and then come back because they had such a blast the time before. So they go back to where this motel was. And it's not there. So the lady drives around because, again, she was driving around this little town, this city, whatever, all night long looking for uh, somewhere open. So she thinks, obviously, as most all of us would, okay, I've just... I've got confused about where this place is. So she drives around the whole town, whole city, can't find it anywhere. Starts stopping at local businesses, asking about the place. Nobody's ever heard of it. And I don't remember the exact name of the place, but she remembers it and was, and was saying it, was telling it. Nobody's ever heard of it. Stops at a laundromat that was literally right across the street from where she knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that this place was never heard of it it's never been there brings the receipt remembers that she still has the receipt in her purse in the vehicle goes out gets the receipt brings it in shows the laundromat owners or the people working the laundromat still never heard of it never heard of this place now what you know about a lot of receipts, they have addresses to the place on them, right? So the address to this place is on the receipt. And the address is right across the street from the laundromat where there's just a parking garage. That's it. Now, we're not talking like months or years went by here. We're talking like a few weeks, 
tops. And nobody's ever heard of this place. All that's left there is a parking garage. And an entire family vividly remember spending an entire night and morning in this place, playing in the pool, dog having an accident, cleaning it up, talking to this lady, doing all this different stuff. And if I'm not mistaken, a copy of the receipt got sent in to the original people that put this story out. So it's like, when I say she's got receipts, she's got receipts. Literal receipts. So how do you explain that? That one, I have no idea. That's portals. I don't know. I got chills listening to it, though. Yeah. Man, you know what? Like, in the freaking what? Pacific Northwest, man, it's just all these crazy <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Like, I'm not going. No, thanks. I don't want to go. I do too. I actually, I would love to go. <laughs> I would love to see Oregon. My cousin uh, lives up there, and their pictures. I want to. I want to go up there for sure. But uh, this is so crazy, Lance. You've read the Dark Tower series, and I know it's just Stephen King books. But think about all the doorways they talk about going to the when and the where. You know, when they would go through those things. It's yeah. basically just talking about portals. Yeah, that's all it is. It's just a description of portals. It's just a description of portals going to the when and the where. And I'll tell you something else that's kind of weird about it. <laughs> but uh, I'll wait till we're done recording. But anyway. That's a wild story. That it, That's nuts. And like I said, I may I was trying to, as you were talking, I kind of, as you got halfway through, I was like, okay, this place is not going to be there. She's going to have a receipt. Like, they're going to be showing people the receipt. Like, I kind of had an idea where it was going. But, Maybe like, that's... you said, like, the address was right across the road. And there was a parking <laughs> garage. I was trying to, in my mind, just come, up with, just come up with anything, right, that would make at least a little bit of sense to at least even some kind of supernatural explanation of what this was. Because I don't know. That's crazy. Maybe that's what that storm was. Maybe. Maybe they were in an alternate dimension, right, or whatever. Maybe they just thought that was a storm and they, that's what it looks like when you go through a portal. I I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. And again, you know, just my recollection of it, some of the details might be a little off, but just as far as, as the basis of how that all went, I know that's right because when I heard it, I was like, holy crap like i stopped everything there's certain things that i hear throughout the day that i just stop everything that i'm doing i stop ryan and i'm like look bro listen <laughs> i gotta yes. tell you this lance it's really hard to get through the dark tower series <laughs> he's such an annoyance <laughs> i'll just be i do this all day all right all right all right <laughs> And he already knows. Like, I don't have to say anything. I just make it. I, I look just, at his face. Like, I'll be working. You know, we're just working. And then all of a sudden, I'm like. And he just goes ahead and pulls this up, clicks it off, and waits. <laughs> I don't even put a board in the planner because it's too loud and I can't hear him. He knows I'm coming. He knows I'm coming with something crazy. Yeah. What does what, what did, what did uh, Dan Cummings and his wife have to say about this? Well, I mean, they were talking just the same kind of thing. Like. To the best that I can remember, it was the same kind of, you know, it, was it some kind of alternate dimension? Was it some kind of, you know, in just some like a crazy, tragic time of need? Did somehow this, I don't know, this, this, <laughs> I don't know. It's dude. weird too that, like, oh, we're just here to help people. Yeah. Like, that's, to me, that's weird. Guardian too. Angel Hotel. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's a weird. It's a weird story. It doesn't yeah, sound like crazy. a bad thing. Like they think, had a great time, right? Like it yeah. wasn't. There's no like bad memories about it. So it was so good they wanted to go back, yeah. right? Well, I think I, I think now that 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 you mentioned it, I think their big thing they talked about like a glitch in the matrix, like a like you know somehow there was a glitch, but. To me, that's not like to me a glitch in the matrix is like 
you're walking down the street and you see somebody eating a hot dog and then you you're keep walking and, and 50 feet, well, no, if like 50 feet on down the street, you see the same person eating a hot dog. Like that's, to me, that's like a glitch in the you're matrix. driving down the interstate and you see a huge airplane flying right at you and then you drive by the airplane and it's just stuck in the air. That's a glitch in the matrix. Yeah, yeah, that's freaking weird, dude. That's so that's, weird. That's for sure. I've been looking for those, Lance, ever since you told us. Have you seen the? Have you, look, have you seen the? Like, have you looked online for them? Yeah, yeah, I've seen those, but I've been physically looking up to the okay. sky trying to find my own. You know. Well, you know, you talk about that, and Lance might remember this story. I don't think that I've ever talked about it on the podcast. This was right before the whole Shadow Man stuff started happening around my dad's house. But I was driving home from Monica's house one night, and I was just like a few minutes before curfew. I mean, oh, curfew. I was booking it, bro. A tray you was blasting in the background. Oh, curfew. Uh, like I was booking it up the old Lit Creek, son. Booking it. Just an old Danger Ranger. <laughs> so I'm driving, and I get. Well, I'm not even going to mention it because nobody out there knows what I'm talking about. I'm driving up the road, and I see this older fella standing on the side of the road. You know, whatever. It's Lit Creek. You know, it's oh, – like, it Who knows? <laughs> who knows? Papa done come out of the holler to, to check his steel down in the bottom of it and decided he wasn't hiking back up the mountain. He's just going to catch a ride back around the way. Could be, right? Yeah. So I don't think anything of it. I drive another probably quarter of a mile on up the creek. I see the same dude, same, same exact dude standing on the side of the road. So then I was like, wait a minute. But still, you know, logically I'm thinking, okay, somehow this guy has like took some kind of weird, crazy shortcut through the woods and popped out here again in the middle of the road. This dude's messing with me. I, I don't know what's going on. But logically, I'm thinking, logically, I'm trying to put this together. But justinly, I'm freaking out a little bit and I'm f going faster because this is freaking me out. So I drive probably another half mile and it wasn't far before I turn off of Lit Creek up the holler that I lived. I'm driving and I go around this this steep kiss you high end curve and you can't see anything past it. You know, it's just a blind curve. And I come around this curve. And as soon as I do, my lights hit the same exact dude standing in the middle of the road. Standing around the middle of the road, same dude. Saw him three times within probably a mile. And there's no way, no way possible. Look, old danger was booking it, son. He was giving Lit Creek everything that it had. Should have run over him that time. Well, I dead stopped in the middle of the road because I was freaking the F out. And then I was slowly going up toward him. But, like, he just didn't – like, he just stepped back and watched me go by. <laughs> you young puppy, you better quit driving so fast. So with that is 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 that was that a glitch in the matrix or was that some kind of entity yeah, or was sounds, that that sounds supernatural not a glitch in the matrix? And then it wasn't it wasn't probably two three weeks after this is when all the crap started going on. He was there at dad's house. <laughs> was a terrible warning. Oh shit! No, I told my story on the here. podcast here, yeah, but I just. You. Just told you boys. Which story? About the plane. I don't think that you've told it yet. No, I think you were trying to talk your wife into coming on and backing you up. Well, I'll tell the story now, but since we're talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. And then we'll get her. She has other things. She can come to you, back me up and tell some of the other <laughs> stuff that's been going on. Oh, goodness. We were driving down 81. I-81 a couple of weeks ago, a month ago, a month and a half. And had been seeing weird stuff, right? And like I was, it wasn't just me seeing it. It was my very skeptic wife who was actually pointing the things out to me as we were driving. 
Um, and I just kind of just laughed about it and was like, yeah, I told you, like, there's just stuff you know, going on. Like, you're just now seeing it. It happened on, on numerous occasions. So we're, we're talking like an eight hour trip. So we're coming back in the middle of the day and we're driving back down 81. And there's this huge, we're close to an airport, obviously. There's this huge, like, Boeing 747, whatever, commercial jet that we can see banking to land. And it's banking around. As it's banking, it's like turning and flying towards us, right? So it's up in the sky. And we're driving southbound on 81, and the plane is coming in northbound, essentially, to land. And we just had the girls back there, and the girls like to see an airplane. So we just mentioned, hey, look, there's a huge plane up there. It's really low. It's going to land. And they were looking, oh, yeah, that's really cool. Then they're back to their tablet, show whatever, you know. Well, we're driving, and like, hey, just kind of, she just kind of keeps watching the plane, and we kind of cross paths with it, essentially, like perpendicular. Um, and she smacks me in the arm. She's like, Lance, look at that plane. I was like, what? She's like, it's not, it's just, it's just hovering there. It's not hovering there. It's a jet. It's not a hell. She's like, it's just not moving and, and i looked over to my left at my driver's window and it wasn't it was just there like it wasn't going any farther it wasn't going up it wasn't going down it was just stuck right in the sky and we're both trying to figure it out and i told Haley that maybe it's just the way we're looking at it optically maybe it's just the way we're looking at it. no as we continued to drive down southbound i kept looking at my rear view. it didn't move and then it was just gone <laughs> And she will come in and, and 100% back me up on that. It was the craziest thing ever. And then I told her, like, I've seen some of these videos on, like, Instagram run reels or whatever. Like, these planes just, like, people video and it's just there, stuck in the air. Like, it's a glitch or whatever. But we just saw one of those. That's so crazy, yeah, man. Yeah, that's for sure a glitch in the Matrix. That's you know, nuts. speaking of seeing people in the road, my brother-in-law, this isn't weird. It's just funny. My brother-in-law... Had never been this far before. He'd never been to Hayside. Well, he came in from Charlotte because he's helping his grandmother. And he said he was going to come down and see us, you know, for a little while. So we're going to meet him at ENS Grocery. <laughs> he's like, I came across council and all that. And he's like, and, it, you know, it was cold this evening. He's like, there's a dude walking down the road in a tank top. <laughs> I was like, yeah. It happens. Methamphetamines don't throw yeah. cold. Yeah. <laughs> That's also yeah. supernatural. <laughs> he he can't feel it. I'll be possible to wait for 72 straight hours, too. <laughs> don't slow down below 35. He'll try to steal your hubcap. It's all natural <laughs> ingredients. Healthier for you than a freaking apple. <laughs> the message, kids. Don't do meth. Yeah, <laughs> just don't do those bad drugs. Hey, have y'all ever heard about the man from Torrid? T O R R I D T A U R E D. That's, that's not a tard. He's a wore out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's tard. No, he probably was I watched tarred. the man from Uncle the other day. That was pretty good. That's a good one. Ah. That's a good one. But no, I have not heard this. That, that well, that one just popped in my head because we keep talking about these disappearing places and like places that you know I guess never really existed or whatever. Y'all should look into the man from Torrid. It's a it's a well documented number one, but it's really it's weird. Mm. The bait. I, I, I'll give you the the gist. So. I think it was 19, like mid 1950s, 54, I want to say. Um, this dude land, this dude gets off of a plane in a Japanese, I think it was Tokyo. I think it was Tokyo International Airport. Gets off of a plane. After, yeah, I know this is now. Keep going. And. As he gets off the plane, you know, people describe him as a Caucasian man with a beard, that his accent was like French, but he could also speak Japanese and also speak all these other languages. 
Um, but he gets detained by, you know, whatever. And I mean, I don't know if it was TSA at the time, TSA now, but he gets detained there because he doesn't have a valid passport. So he, he gets off of this plane. So, I mean, he had his passport had to check out from somewhere. Let's start questioning this man. And he tells them that he's from a country called Torrid. Tells them about, and I know Lance is looking at this right now. You, you tell the deets if I'm messing them up, Lance. You're doing great. But he tells the people that detains him, like, first off, he speaks all these different languages. They pull out a map and tell or ask him where Torrid is at to explain where Torrid is. And like he points at a, a a place that was like like east of Spain, I'm thinking, like an island, like east of Spain, something like that. It was like, but he was confused. Like, like when he pointed at the map, he was confused at why the, the place that he pointed at on the map wasn't showing the name of Order his country. Between France and Spain. Boom. France and Spain. But he was confused. Like where he was pointing at on the map was called something different the than the country that Andorra. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So he was totally confused. So they detained the man. Evidently he has currency from this country. He has, of course, like I said, a passport from this country. They, Keep questioning him, keep questioning him, keep questioning because they thought he was like some kind of threat. Like he was just completely feeling him full of a bunch of crap or that he was some kind of spy or whatever. And now the way the story goes, and there's two different ways. I mean, everything that you look at is going to be fact-checked. We all know that. But the way that the story goes is they they put him up like in this these quarters, this motel, hotel, whatever, to kind of figure out what to do with him and go back to check on him next day or whatever to pull him out, and he's gone. Disappears completely. <laughs> it's nuts, dude. They still have his passport, still have been went to the stuff that they detained from him and thinking, you know, he had to come back for it. But, like, they go back to look for the stuff, all of it's gone, too. Uh, so they've had all this past fortune you know, kept in a locker or whatever, kept in you know, whatever lock and key or whatever, put him up for the night, go to find him. He's gone. Then the way he's got to come back for his stuff, go back. It's gone. It's all gone. Then it's there. <laughs> Holy crap. So, I mean, that's not so much a disappearing place. It's a disappearing person from a place that he says he's from that's never existed. Uh, it's the CIA for sure. Well, that's most ex- I was reading a quick. Most explanations or theories are that it's some sort of government agency. That's- Justin's explanation is that this dude came from some kind of parallel universe where Torrid is on the border of France and Spain. And he had currency from there, man. Like, Currency from a place that never existed. Why, as a, a, a alphabet agency or a some kind of, of agent from an organization, why would you have currency from a place that doesn't exist? To make it look like it did. Man. I don't know. That don't make sense to me. It don't add up. No, it's, yeah, it's great. It, that's one of those, like, if if you're still listening to us, first of all, God bless you. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> you need to go. Sorry, you need to go check. Like, just Google that and read just some of the information around that story. Because even if we we could sit here for another hour and a half and just talk about the different details and things around that story and the explanations and the theories and if it's true, if it's not true, if it's all fabricated, like there's a whole bunch of stuff that you all I think will enjoy. Sitting down in the pooper for 10, 15, 20 minutes. Google that and just read some of the stuff around the man from Torrid. Also known as the man from Tana, Tana, Tana Sabet, maybe. Um, is this another Tana Sabet? Is another iteration of the same story. Um, Tana Sabet is translated into Torrid if it's French or whatever. But um, it's, there's a lot of interesting things 
uh, around that story that I, I once you start into that, I remember that it's actually in a book I think uh, that was published in the eighties, um, and I remember having heard that story before. Um, but just as a quick search there, like this, the breeding some of the theories around it's pretty wild. Yeah, it is. Those are the type cool. of stories for me, like <clears throat> ghost stories and demon stories or whatever. I'm whatever UFO favorite. Like those stories right there will put chills down my back every time. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't matter how many times I hear stuff like that. It always puts chills down my back. Well, that's like I was listening to another episode and somebody was talking about this. And this was just, this was completely urban legend. But it was like this Japanese town, this this Japanese village that. You know, used to be a successful fishing village and then like a bunch of disease and poverty hit the place. <clears throat> and like they were just one of these forgotten places in Japan, you know, they were getting no government help, you know, all this different stuff. Well, eventually, like the people that were there, they just they were uprooted or not uprooted. They like put their roots in the ground. They were like, we ain't leaving. So they started like resorting to some terrible thing, cannibalism, you know, all this different stuff and like declared themselves completely uh separate from the japanese government and just done whatever but like this place was said to be nothing but urban legend and like that over generations and generations of incest and and cannibalism and all this different stuff that they were like literal just monsters but there's a couple of people that said they've been there like so you know it's one of those things that's what st started getting me looking into, you know, are there, are there places out there, you know, are, are people talking about, you know, whole towns, villages, places that, you know, some people can see and some people can't, you know, some people stumble up on and others never do, or when they do stumble up on them, they can't find them anymore. So it sent me down a whole rabbit hole of, you know, people coming up on places and then because look i'm just telling you flat out like i would think i was going crazy i would think i was insane <laughs> if i spent this time at this place i physically interacted with people had conversations and came back it's the money that you spent <laughs> yeah i do and like I came back and it's just nowhere and that would like that would be if it was just me. If it was my entire family, I think like there's something in the water. There's a carbon there monoxide like a, leak somewhere. <laughs> isn't there like a subreddit thread or something about some town over in like or city or village or something in Europe that doesn't exist? Uh, I think it's in Germany. Germany, okay. And it's kind of like a running joke, right? But you get to digging into it, like. There's some interesting things kind of behind it too, right? Mm -hmm. Again, yeah, I'm, I'm reaching way back there in the brain and pulling some stuff that I vaguely know a little bit about. Um, I came, I came across what you're talking about right now. I came across a little bit of that, but there was, there was so much around it that was just like myth and legend, and like people legitimately just saying, "Well, this is a story," you know, that was passed down. So, but like the more like there is a lot of stuff involved with it that you're like, hmm, well, I don't like, know. let's say Luxembourg. It's not Luxembourg, but it's something like that, right? Yeah. It's hey, it's what I got the worldwide weird about my finger dip is boards. I can to look it up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's crazy, dude. Like oh, this man. stuff is crazy. Billfield? Yeah, that's it. That's it. Hmm. A conspiracy and a satirical conspiracy that claims that Billfield, Germany does not exist. Does it exist? Does not. But there's like pictures of it. I don't know. I think maybe there's a joke. I don't know. Hmm. One, offers $1 million or $1 million. What's the Germans? Are they, are they Euros? No, Germany's not Euros, are they? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, when we have Euros to prove that it doesn't exist. 
propagated by various forces. I don't know. That's a, there's another one we could probably jump down, but we don't have time for that. Yeah. I'm sleepy. Hey, I think uh, Justin froze on us there. Look at him. He doesn't exist. Yeah. It's a glitch. It's a glitch in the matrix. It's yeah. Really glitch in the matrix. They put the zero into other one. We tell you about yeah, a story of things that don't number. exist after using it. Like Justin was here all night, but guess what? He really wasn't, folks, because he <laughs> doesn't have internet. Look at that cheeky little smile he's got too. Your third he does. He's, stuck. <laughs> he's really like pixelated, <laughs> blurry. It's a glitch in the matrix right there. Look at that face. It's, it's crazy. Well, Ron, super interesting. Yeah. Uh, that, um, and again, when he first mentioned this, I was like, this is going to be so stupid. Like, I'm in, of course, I'm always in, but I'm not going <laughs> to enjoy this at all. No, that was really cool. It was interesting. Especially that last story. Yeah, to have re actual nice. receipts and memories of a place, and then to go back just a few weeks later, and people are like, what the hell are you talking about? Like and then having addresses, like having like this. Look, here's the address. It's literally right there. There is a, yeah. you know, there's the nine one one sign. And it's not there anymore. Yeah, there's no denying that. Oh, yeah, that's crazy. And you know, those people too are like, what is going on? Like, yeah, I these, think if I was the people in the laundromat, about what the hell? Who are these <laughs> crazy people in here? Is that what I'm, I mean? Who would even think to like? Make a receipt and come up and make up a story like that, right? You're not, yeah, exactly. Who's going to take the time to do that? Yeah. Just, you, just because in some podunk town, just because, like, <laughs> that just it seems weird to me to do that, right? I mean, people are crazy, I guess, but that would be a lot of work for a really minuscule, like a really specific joke to try to play on like seven people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Didn't sound like a very big town, <laughs> and just stopped like what a couple of places. I got those fuckers good. <laughs> oh, oh, goodness. Oh, man. Well, he'll fuck, I'll guess. Oh, here he comes. I was going to do the closing, but now he is on his way back. Oh, you know what? Before we do close, I wanted to do something I think we should do. You know, we always give a shout out to our reviews, our five star reviews. So I mm -hmm. think, uh, I think. It would be uh, nice of us to give a shout out to our new Patreon members. Absolutely. That would be a great idea. And so starting off, I just want to give a big thanks to our new kinfolk, Kenneth Bailey, Mr. Here, here. Beard. You're here, here. The amazing Rando. You're here, here. Troy. You're here, here. I think this is pronounced Fido. You're here, here. P wait. P H Y D O U X. When you consider that Fido. Yes, absolutely. And Maynard W. Here, here. Thank you guys for supporting us on the Patreon and becoming kinfolk. We don't uh, deserve it. And we know that. But we appreciate it. Yeah, we, <laughs> we appreciate it. And we thank you guys for supporting the show, helping us grow even more. And uh, you can expect your stickers in the mail. And for you right, guys Justin. listening out there, if you want this really special time dedicated just to putting your name on the podcast for Ryan to to read off and express our gratitude collectively here, all you have to do is head over to Patreon, pick one of the tiers, sign up uh, to become a little closer to the family over here, get a little a few extra things, some bonus content, some of the hollerback episodes that will be working on as well um especially some of the longer conversations that we had like justin mentioned earlier uh, sometimes we get into a little more there's not even more off the rails than than originally as the night progresses sometimes so if you want to uh you know, kick us a couple dollars and uh, support us financially um everything we get goes right back into the show trying to make it better make it sound better make it look better um Pick some topics for us, questions and answers, and just kind of more of a community, more of a tribe that Justin always says we're trying to build here. By all means, we'd greatly appreciate it. If not, that's fine. You keep you just keep smashing the download button and listening to us too. Yeah. Uh, and as Justin always says, the biggest thing you can do for us is share the show, share it around to everybody. Justin, go ahead and you know, close us up there tonight since you're back now with us after you glitched out. Absolutely. You fellas done a fantastic job. I couldn't have said any of that better myself. We know. 
Yep. Understand. So, Hill folk, remember, subscribe to our YouTube. Please rate and review this show wherever you listen to podcasts. Share the show. Just like Lance said right then, share it however you're most comfortable sharing it. Send us your stories. Send us your stories at Appalachian Intelligence at gmail.com. And it's 11 11. And you boys know what that means. <laughs> Shit. Time to go. Until Make next time. Wish. I love you and mean it. We'll see y'all later. <laughs>